This paper came out in Science showing that humans, men in particular in this study, have a strong biological response and hormonal response to the tears of women. What they did is they had women, and in this case it was only women for whatever reason, cry and they collected their tears. Then those tears were smelled by male subjects or male subjects got what was essentially the control, which was the saline. Men that smelled these tears that were evoked by sadness had a reduction in their testosterone levels that was significant. They also had a reduction in brain areas that were associated with sexual arousal. So just as there are behaviors that can increase testosterone, there are behaviors that can decrease testosterone. And one of the most well-characterized ones in humans is becoming a parent. So expecting fathers have an almost 50% decrease in testosterone levels, both free and bound testosterone. It turns out that these effects of reduced testosterone, increased estradiol, and reduced cortisol can all be explained by an increase in prolactin. It is a well-known phenomenon that testosterone is going to drop, prolactin is going to increase, estradiol is going to increase in males and females that are expecting children. I'm now venturing to territory for which I am certainly not an expert, is that things like plastics that have BPAs may be a concern, but the most serious or enriched source of BPAs are things like printed receipts. I was out for dinner the other night. I, this was probably about a month and a half ago. And the server came over and I reached for the receipt. And as I was going for it like this, one of the girls who I'd never met before, she's a creator online, hit my hand away. I was like, are you really going to touch that? And this is the first time I've ever heard about this. Yeah. This is legit. Yeah, printed receipts are, are a, a, a rich source of BPAs. Listen, it, it's going to vary. Some people are operating with a testosterone level and sperm count that's already back on its heels, so yes. to speak. Some people have abundant testosterone and sperm. So it is really going to depend on the individual. I don't think people should get paranoid or delusional about any of this. But just don't start sleeping in a bed of receipts. Don't start sleeping in a bed of receipts. That's an interesting one. There are all sorts of jokes that could be made about that <laughs> one um, that I won't make. But there, there are also some other things like cannabis, marijuana, THC. Yes or no, it diminishes testosterone levels. Smoked cannabis, I would say, diminishes testosterone, increases prolactin. That's a no. Other cannabinoids, not particularly harmful. So CBD? Um, CBD, not particularly harmful. Smoked CBD, I'm not sure. What about edible cannabis and THC? As far as I know, edible cannabis and THC does not significantly increase prolactin to a point where it would be uh, disruptive of hormones. What about uh, nicotine? and testosterone and estrogen and other hormones, smoked nicotine. Nicotine is particularly concerning not only for testosterone, but also for estrogen. Part of it is if you're talking about nicotine from tobacco, there's many other carcinogens in it, especially if it's smoked. But nicotine, even if it is chewed in a dose-dependent manner, so if you can use an extremely small amount of nicotine, then it's not as concerning in the long run. In a previous discussion of ours, I asked you about um, caloric restriction and testosterone. And if I recall correctly, for individuals who are not carrying an excess of body fat, caloric restriction is actually going to lower testosterone. That's correct. Um, if you look at an individual in a caloric deficit, several changes will happen. One is that they'll have less building blocks for hormones. And they'll also have the high SHBG that we defined earlier as the binding protein. So their free androgens and free estrogens will go down. You mentioned porn and masturbation. Um, so what are your thoughts on porn and masturbation as they relate to hormones? And here, I suppose we need to be um, somewhat specific and operationally define what we're talking about. We're talking about porn and masturbation to the point of ejaculation, mm -hmm. right? Um, so this may be one of the cases where the dose makes the poison. And if it is a very frequent habit, certainly uh, daily or more than once a day would be very detrimental from a hormonal component, not even taking into account the the neural wiring. Listen, I think it's terrific that you've actually defined frequency because this is the problem on the internet or even in the doctor's office, you'll see um, descriptions about pornography being dangerous for certain things or, or detrimental to hormones. People say frequent, but what's frequent? So you're yeah. saying daily or multiple times per day would be potentially detrimental to the hormone profile of a male of essentially any age. And that's just for masturbation. Um, with pornography, uh, with porn use as well, it would likely be worse. <laughs>